of every possible subset. But here, the subsets are always pairs. So we should notice that. Yeah? You didn't do the non-deterministic intersection. That's good. Damn. I, we just did that now. That's, yeah, that's this. Right, right. Well, I, I'll, we showed that if you have two machines for A and B. Oh, oh, oh. Is there any way to do intersection non deterministically? Yeah. Only indirectly. First, you do the two complements. Okay, then you do the union. And then you do the. Right, there's, right. there's no other. Right. Non determinism does not mix well with, uh, with intersection. Non-determinism mixes well with ors, not with ands. And this is an idea that's going to come all, all the way up in Turing machines. And I'll show you something that's, well, it, you brought it up, so you're getting this two-second digression. But you know that non-determinism means you have a zero coming out of here and another zero going to another place. And we, we define it to mean we accept any string if there's a way to get to a final state through here or through here. Why didn't we define it? if there's a way to get to a final state through both of these. Why didn't we say and instead of or? Somebody in their gut instinct might have just said, well, I'm barely understanding what's going on so far, so I'm not going to ask that question. Right? But that's a natural question to ask. Right? You've got to say, why make this or? Why not make it and? I try to motivate why we made it or, because if you do this reversal backwards, it's kind of what we want. You want to start here or here. Or is more natural. But people do define this as and. and Sometimes you even mix finite state machines, where some of the states are labeled or, and some of the states are labeled and. And those are called alternating finite state machines. And the way you define whether you accept a string in those is that anything that goes through an or state, there has to be some path out of it that gets to a final state. Anything that goes through an and state, all the paths that go out of it have to reach a final state. It turns out that making a finite state machine alternating like that also doesn't give it more power. And that idea of an alternating idea goes up to Turing machines. So we may talk about that much later in the course again. But, but it's a good question to ask, and it's an interesting point. For the, for the rest of the lecture, I'm going to stay away from, from some gory details, which we've been spending time on up till now, and talk more big picture of where we're heading for the next lecture. And then I'll fill in the details in. So here's where we are. We talked about finite state machines, non-deterministic machines. We found out that non-deterministic finite state machines can be converted to deterministic finite state machines. So either one of these are OK way to look at these kind of sets. There's going to be a bigger set of connections. We're going to connect this to something called regular expressions, which you've seen in other contexts. Specifically in, in, in web programming, you see regular expressions a lot. In any kind of pattern matching, you see it. Regular expressions is another way of describing the sets that finite state machines can accept. They're identical to the finite state machines. That's not obvious. But tomorrow, tomorrow, Sunday, I will show you how to convert any deterministic finite state machine to a regular expression. So there'll be a connection between here and here. So this is not yet, but this we've done. And then I'm going to complete the triangle by showing you that any regular expression can be converted to a non-deterministic finite state machine. So these are all three, three different windows to the same picture. And in computer science, you desperately want three different views to the same thing. Because depending on the view you have, certain things seem easier. And the more views you have, the more tools you have at your disposal to make important discoveries. So we're going to do this triangle. There's a fourth thing called regular grammars, or sometimes called linear grammars. And these are also equivalent to all these three. And we're going to fit it into the picture by showing an equivalence to deterministic machines. So that will fill in this picture of looking at finite state machines from all the different possible ways. There is no such thing as an analog for regular expressions as we go up the hierarchy. It disappears. But there is such a thing of non-determinism, and there is a grammar analog. The grammar analog and the machine analog rise all the way up this hierarchy, all the way to Turing machines. And that's what's sometimes called the Chomsky hierarchy. The grammar and the machine parallel all the way up the line. And it's really interesting, because grammars and machines don't look alike, but they come in pairs. All right, questions about where we're headed with this? All right. 
Second big picture. We talk really briefly about what isn't a regular set. Okay, what can't be accepted by a finite state machine. And uh, a lot of different ideas came up. Somebody said Fibonacci numbers in binary. That's true. Not acceptable by a finite state machine. Equal numbers of zeros and ones. Anything that requires counting or arithmetic or more than finite storage, no way to do it. So none of those things can be done. The question is what things can be done? Well, things that you can write regular expressions for can be done. Things that I give you lots of examples on the homework can be done. It would be nice to have a method to show that you can't do something. Because otherwise you just go home and you try really hard and you come in and you say I can't do it, but that doesn't prove to me you can't do it. And proving you can't do something is always harder than proving you can do it. Because once you've done it and show me an example, you're finished. But to show me you can't do it, you can try an infinite number of examples and I'm still not satisfied. So we need a trick. And I want to introduce this a little bit because it's a nice, we'll go through it again in detail, but at least it's a nice way to, to kind of end the day. You don't have to take notes on it. We're just going to, we're just going to have a discussion. So here's the discussion. Here's a set. 0 to the n, 1 to the n. It includes the empty string. It includes 0, 1. It includes 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, et cetera. Okay, it includes all the strings that have an equal number of zeros and ones that start with zeros and end with ones. There's no finite state machine for this. Let's convince ourselves. Let's try to make one. If I see a zero, I go to a new state. Now remember, I've seen one zero. And if I see a one, I go back here and I accept. If I see another zero, I go here. And if I see a one, I go all the way back. Right, I go back twice. And a zero out of here, I die. And any, any arrows I don't put in, I'm dead. Well, that takes care of two of the strings, or three of them. Hmm? Here? You tell me, Sharon. Why wouldn't that work? Because it would accept things that I don't want it to accept. What else would accept if I did that? It would accept 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. This is a really important point that Sharon made up. A lot of times you say, oh, I can do that. And you include all the things you're supposed to accept. And you think you did it. But you included lots of things that you weren't supposed to accept. And a lot of times, sets are easy because they're so inclusive. The more you include, the easier it is to make a decision. It's like if you're a bouncer at a bar, and you're not very picky, and you let most people in, then there's not so much work you have to do. And same thing here, if we just, <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> if you just go ahead and put all the ones back in here, it includes lots of things. Lots of things that you don't want it to. Yeah, Brian. I, I have a totally unrelated question about the notation with the exponents yep. there. Uh, that really threw me in the book. Uh, normally, if I see 1 to the fifth, I think 1, not 1, 1, 1, 1. Yeah. So right. Is, is that just a, a convention for yes. that kind of work? Yes. In, in this book, you will, <laughs> I'm not going to say never, but you will hardly ever see this mean 32. All the symbols in this book are, for the most part, strings. And exponentiation on a string just means repetition. Okay. And it should have thrown you the first time you saw it. But try to get used to it. It's 98% it's of the time just repetition. So, so 0 to the 0 is an empty string then? Yeah. But you can see how often I've used that. <laughs> yes, you're right. Absolutely. Good. I thought chapter zero was that really helpful. <laughs> yeah, chapter zero makes it Oh, oh, it, it, oh, it, it emphasizes it. It says, be careful, right? Is something? It just goes over. It just goes over. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm clever. I'm just. <laughs> All right. So, uh, if, we this, if we kept trying to do this, what would happen? Here's three zeros. One, one, one. Right, it doesn't look very finite. This is a nice infinite state machine. While I'm saying this, what do you need to add to a finite state machine to make it more powerful? If you gave it an infinite number of states, that's a Turing machine. Right? So you can't do that. You know what you need to